is Vivek and in this particular video we're going to talk about how you can balance your dev dsa and college all together in your college life right because this is one of the most common questions that has always been sent to me on linkedin or asked on youtube and i always felt that it's obviously a personal choice how you want to do that but if you have to actually find a good strategy you have to look at what other people have done that have worked for them because not everything you can come up on your own, right? If you steal some good things from other people, most probably you will end up at a place where they might have done, okay? So, we'll talk about all the things that you need. I will give you some strategies, uh, some things that have worked for me, some of these which has worked for my students. I have taught more than 2,000 students now, so I know a lot of things that have worked for them. And then also tell you like, uh, like some con like common pitfalls that people fall for because I feel a lot of issues exist because people go in a, into a lot of FOMO and all. So I'll talk about that. Okay. So let's get started. I think this is all balancing dev DSA. All of these things is related to time management, right? I think in college it's become super important to kind of manage your time because again, you can do it, do everything at the end when you have interns and placement, but the earlier you start, the better results you get. I think that is what I have always seen in general. At least six months is needed for some good result to be delivered at the end with a confidence, right? Random results, I'm not talking about random results. Some people definitely get random results. Ki, okay, this set and they randomly got, some people get good, some people don't get what they expected. But uh, if you are somebody who wants to be in a place ki I'm going to sit with confidence and I'm going to crack anything I sit for, then you need a good amount of time to actually prepare for it. Okay. Now, this is also important because I don't want anybody to at the end regret that, hey, uh, I didn't really plan it the way I should have done at the start. Because if you have at the hindsight that, hey, this is something I have to do, you will always be attentive to that during your college years, even if you're enjoying with your friends and all those things. You will have some time aside to do this, right? So let's talk about my strategy, okay? Let's talk about what worked for me. So I had five years in my college. I was a dual degree student and what worked for me was actually a split of semesters. So what I did was I had two semesters in my college, autumn and spring. In the autumn semesters, I used to prepare hardcore competitive programming because ICPC used to happen in December. Now I feel DSA and competitive programming are difficult, not because it's a hard content, but also because it has no motivation to it. But when you attach yourself to an exam like ICPC, right? You will actually have a constant force that, hey, I have to actually push for getting good ranks in that, right? Or maybe like kickstart that used to happen earlier or hacker cup that happens, right? So these things actually used to push me quite a lot. And in my autumn semester, which is from July to, I would say December start, right? I used to prepare very well for competitive programming and then sit for ICVC. Post December, when ICP used to get in, I used to get into a little relaxed mode. Ki achha, bahut kar liya. Like I've done a lot of uh, competitive programming now. Let's sit back. I used to just give contests whenever it used to happen here and there. Try to win some prizes whenever I used to get time. But then usually what I used to do was do a little bit of dev. Uh, not I would not say self-project. I used to try and hunt internships here and there. So in first year summers, I tried to hunt a, like uh, uh, internship in data analytics company as an just a learner and content curator. In second year, I tried to get an internship in a like social firm, Kolkata Police basically, right? So that's a government body. Uh, and that was again an interesting experience. Uh, third year, I got an internship in Adobe Research. The th fourth year, I got an internship at Google. So all this internship itself built a lot of like, in like dev profile for me. And I think that is very true. Internships are the best way to build a good dev profile. Number one, it, it is very credible because you are actually saying you interned somewhere. Not just, hey, I copied something, uh, I built something that might have been copied from, let's say, GitHub. And it also tells you that, hey, uh, maybe uh, these all things are something that is industry standards or whatever they have done in this project would have been industry standard because there would be somebody as a mentor in these companies who would have vetted these work, right? So they are a little more credible than self-project. But again, self-projects are also a great way to build a good profile, okay? So this is what worked for me. My dev profile were, were built in the spring semesters or the summers when I used to do the internships. And uh, my first autumn semesters used to like go into competitive programming. Now I would say, how did you balance college with all of these? Uh, I would say I did not, I never balanced it. I was more of that child who used to prepare just before the exams and that worked for, for me. It's different for everybody, but it worked for me. Uh, I had really good friends who helped me before the exams um, and also sometimes in assignments, but 
uh, yeah, that's that's something that worked for me, right? So I know college was never the first priority for me. The order was always CP, intern, college, right? That, that's this was always the order. So fix your order. I think that is going to give you a lot of uh, good idea on what you should do at any point in time, right? Now let's talk about what you should do. What should be some tested? What are some tested strategies that I see, right? I think this split thing works very well. But how do you apply or when do you apply? Because some people have like, let's say two years left for their internships and placements and you have a lot of time. But some people have like uh, internships and placements coming right away. So I'll talk about uh, three different kinds of people right now. Okay. One is they have a lot of time, like year, at least a year, right? A year or two year, like you're in first year, second year. Then some people who have like less around six months. Okay. And then some people who don't have any time left, right? Uh, maybe like one month left of our replacements, which is I think a lot of people right now. So uh, for people who have like, who are in your first and second year, I think a very good way to start your college career would be to number one, do a little bit of exploration. Keep what all domains exist, right? We, not a lot of people know about what all domains exist. Number one, learn a programming language. I think C++ should be best at the start because it is going to help you down the like whole CPDSA journey quite a lot. And since you're starting early, you will have a great head start. So learn C++ and STL in that, that is going to give you a lot of leverage. And once you're done with that, just spend your first year doing questions on code forces and art coder art coders. There is something called as art coder beginner contest and code forces diff three, diff four should be sufficient at that stage. So if you, if you're just, learning C++ STL and doing code forces and, and add coder that is going to give you enough leverage in your first year to be built to build on top of in the next com coming years, right? For second years. So just do these things and explore, enjoy college. I think don't spend too much in first year into something that you don't might, that you might not spend a lot of time on later on too. This is, but this is a very, very primal skill because once you do just this initial part, you will be good at implementation, which will be required at every place, be that ML, be that dev, be that uh, CP. Number two, you will have, you will have a good debugging skills because that's something I personally feel people who do competitive programming are really good at. So that's why I generally suggest people to start with CP. It's not a something that everybody should abide by. I mean, there are, there have been people who have done phenomenally well doing other things too, but I think debugging skills is something that is going to be there with your throughout your life with you. And uh, if you do CP well, you learn that pretty good. So that is something I would suggest for first year. Now, if you, if you, from the next year onwards, I think do the split thing, do the split thing. If you have a lot of time, do the autumn semesters with CP and DSA that is going to help you and have a target on ICPC or some contest coming around after that. So that is going to give you the motivation you need to solve the questions and uh, have a team around with the ICPC goal as well. So that will give you a lot of like good motivation and pump with the peer group and you will actually do well in the spring semester. Look for interns, build projects, build your resume, look for interns and that's what you should do. Right? So all of these things can be managed with college. I think 50, 50 should be good enough every day. Um, except all the sleeping and uh, enjoyment part, right? I think that's very good uh, kind of split. And uh, I don't think right now in India, like colleges are going to give you too much of benefits. Like I think it's, it's moving towards like skill economy. And I, I think most of you guys have already known about this, that, Hey, uh, skills are becoming much more prevalent. You have to have a super awesome resume to crack the things you need to build good projects and all. Right. So that's uh, something that uh, you, you should aim for. Right. The, just do this split for the next, whatever years you have, you will be good enough for any profile you would be sitting for. Okay. If you're looking for machine learning and all, just replace dev with machine learning, DS, uh, data science, look for hackathons, look for uh, like participating in challenges that is happening, Kaggle and stuff would be standard then for you, right? And that's what you should do. Now, if you, this is for the people who have like a lot of time, right? If you don't have a lot of time, let's say you have six to eight months, what should you do, right? So I would split this into three different phases again, two months each, I'm assuming six months so two months each phase. Uh, and you have placements after that. So what should you do? Number one, I think initially focus on building the resume because if you have the resume, you can keep applying whenever some opportunity comes by. And if you don't have that, you will not be able to apply on anything. So the first woman should go on to learning a language and basic STL, just giving some contest building implementation skills that that is going to take some part of your time. And the other part should be on like projects and stuff. So build projects, build self project and add it to your resume. Now, again, like if you have six months left, I think 
um, your college resume, the, your college CGPA that that's going to be there will not affect your intern uh, your placement scenario anymore. So uh, like college of course takes lowest priority then. I don't mess up your CGPA too much, but again, I think uh, by that time you have a fair bit of idea on where your CGPA is going to be. And based on Indian systems, you cannot change that much, right? So uh, that's what I'll suggest for uh, like the first two months. The next two months should be on proper CP plus like extending the projects and all. So do a little bit of CP, like do target till getting into a range of code forces 1400 plus or 1300 plus. That should be sufficient for the starting implementation. and Code forces is no longer relevant for coding tests and interviews, I feel, because the questions are pretty hard, either pretty hard or they are uh, they are not aligned with the topics that come in code forces anymore. Because we have seen that a lot of questions on code forces, maths and greedy, whereas uh, not a lot of questions on coding test come from greedy topic, right? Or ad hoc topics or observation based questions. Those don't come in coding test. Why? Maybe the setters are not that great in that too. <laughs> that might be another reason. Right, but uh, this is why I think you should do this. So I, I will write this down. Like very simply, this is I think most common scenarios. That's why I'm writing it down. Uh, two two projects, right? In the first three months, in the three months kind of time, okay. In that also, like if you have uh, some time in the first two months, you should focus also on the implementation side of things, like build learning a language and building an implementation skill. Give contest, you will automatically start building that. Okay. In the next two months, you should do hardcore CP a little bit because you will face these questions in your coding test. Okay, uh, college is the last layer. You don't really need to even spend any time on that. I think at this point in time, and the last two months should go into things like lead code or uh, any standard like playlist or sheets that you follow, right? Because these problems do get repeated often, right? So you need to know these problems quite a lot. And I think that's what would be recommended. Of course, based on uh, I think I'm talking about people in college, so we don't have a lot of like system design questions and all coming on, but a lot of like standard questions that will come up are I think from lead code for most people. For those who are applying for HFTs and harder companies, I think they would know what they need to do and they need a lot of more CP. Um, okay, so that's there. And the last three months, you need to prepare well for I think the interviews part. Okay. So for interviews, I think resume preparation will need to be done. Last one month will also need to have some amount of mocks. Okay, plus a little bit of like mock interviews, you should try and practice with your friends. And in the last one month, you should also try to prepare the core OCS subjects because uh, they, these do get asked in interviews as well. So the way would be like split the days, split the like whole like six months that you have. The first and in each day, it's like split it into two half, right? Uh, the first three months, you, you try to build some good project on your CV. Two projects should be more than enough two projects which has like a lot of different subtleties involved in it. I have already made a video on talking about what kind of projects you can build. But in the first two months, in the first half, you try to do the implementation, second half build project. Over here also like this is like three months. So this would be two months and this is one month, right? So this is three month project, then two months resume preparation, interview prep, like doing some HR questions and all those things comes into there and all those things that will give you that time to also do more problems here and there and last one month for uh, the mocks and core CS part. Over here, you can just spend the two months for computer programming, a little bit of questions that come up in coding test. I think we do I have taken a lot of mocks. Watch those mocks, you will get an idea of what kind of questions come on coding test. And then last two months should be on some sheets or some standard set of, set of questions. Uh, now that is, I think, what should be the plan. If you have less than less time than this, I think whatever, like if you have three months, just cut short, uh, like this last two months is absolutely important. Squeeze this in like whatever time left is there, right? So that's that's what I'll suggest in general. Like squeeze this to whatever time left. Like let's suppose you have X time, X minus two. Just squeeze this into the, uh, that much time. And then in last two months, do exactly this, okay? That should be what you should be aiming at. And that should be good enough prep for now, right? So that should be a strategy in your college. Uh, now there are two very, very important pitfalls that I want to talk about. Okay, pitfall number one, don't lose constancy of purpose. So when you are in a phase, when you know that your preparation strategy tells you to do lead code, please don't change this. If you are into some course, do that completely. If you're in some comedy programming or like DSA course, do that completely. If you're building that project, do that properly. Please don't change the constancy of purpose, right? Uh, 
the second reason is actually the like cause of the first problem like uh, why do people lose constancy of purpose because i think a lot of students comes into fomo like that hey uh, my friend is doing a lot of ml stuff and it looks cool on his cv maybe i should do that too or hey uh, he's done some web3 development uh, why don't i add that right if you don't have constancy of purpose on whatever schedule you have kind of planned for yourself you will end up doing random things and uh, you will not land up anywhere so please do this properly and uh, have a constancy of purpose and don't fall into fomo these are two major pitfalls that i have seen uh, students falling into right so i hope you have a plan now and this is a pretty actionable plan so now plan for yourself now after this video and get into art get in, get doing that right so uh, i'm happy to take any questions from you all now in the comments and let me know uh, what did you think about this particular plan have you tried something else which has worked for you and if you know some if you have some question related to your specific scenario you can ask me that too in the comments i'm happy to answer this for at least a week i generally answer all my comments over here also give me a like and subscribe all those things youtuber wala stuff because youtube baba needs to be happy on promoting these videos to other people so that others can get the benefit of this video too and i hope you know what goes on in this channel a uh, little pause in the videos last week but we'll continue on learning videos too very soon so that is pretty much all that is there for this video if you want to know about anything else let me know about any other faq question frequently asked question because this is one of the top pick questions from uh, what is asked to me on uh, linkedin and all so i just made a video on that next time this is going to be linked to that i sent to the students so that's all see you on the next video have a great day bye, -bye.